These are the top 10 climate studies from the last year, going back into the spring of 2019, with some bonus connect the dots at the end. Number 10. Oscillation Modulation One of the most important oscillations for the climate of the Northern Hemisphere is the North Atlantic Oscillation, the NAO. Both it and the overall circulation of the Northern Hemisphere are vital determinants of wintertime conditions, but more importantly, once again we are seeing here it is the solar particle forcing and magnetic coupling of the solar wind to the atmosphere that cannot be understated in the dynamics or in the relationship to the sun. This is one of the foundational reasons why those particles will have a place in climate models going into the future, whereas up to now they have pretty much just been solar irradiance. Number 9. Minimum Slow Walker The walker circulation is a critical component of the equatorial atmospheric dynamics. Within the tropical region, the lifting, descent, and transport of heat with the ocean helps modulate storms, El Nino, global precipitation, and temperature. And after being demonstrated over shorter scales and in more localized studies, the most robust and large-scale identification of the 11-year solar cycle modulation of the walker circulation speed comes here, which confirms previous results showing such slowdown during sunspot maximum phase, and which happens to agree perfectly with the expected effect given the known solar forcing on the tropical Hadley cells, which is their expansion towards the polar region, which means a wider berth for the circulation, and therefore, lower speed to get through the equatorial pipeline. Number 8. The Monsoon 60 The Asian monsoon is responsible for supporting the lives of billions of people. Numerous studies in recent years have shown solar modulation over short and longer time scales, and here we're looking at the 60-year cycle. The larger fluctuations, including the periodic monsoon failure, bring major changes and challenges, including the major famines of the region. These larger cycles have been confirmed over the longest period of study to date, and they match up with solar activity throughout the isotope record. Number 7. Bitter Monsoon Winter the decadal solar signal in the Asian monsoon is actually easier to spot, and its mechanisms are becoming well established as being connected with semi-permanent pressure cells over Siberia, which control the extreme winters in the Asian region. Between the decadal and centennial forcing in the peer-reviewed literature, and between all of the solar forcing of those semi-permanent pressure cells that is also in the literature, we can now account for all the observed variability of the monsoon with space weather. Number six impossible signals. Dr. Frank of SLAC, where grants and politics take a back seat to science as happens at many national labs. Simply put, this is the mathematical proof that there is no way to legitimately extract a human-caused global warming signal, as if that's not enough of a charge. It's an easy paper to read, following the concept that if you want someone to understand something, you make it as simple as possible. But also, in the world where answers and replies to important papers and important claims come in a matter of days to weeks, this one has not been challenged in the more than six months of its existence, and mathematically, it shows that the entire global warming blame game is based on fantasy and phantoms. Number 5. Mole Hill Using a tremendously long data set, the top team in South America and one of their colleagues in Canada have demonstrated that not only is the sun a major control over the long-term temperatures of the planet, but that modern warming is nothing significant. They found shorter-term variability to be entirely controlled by Pacific processes like El Nino, on which there are more than a couple papers on solar forcing, more than any other global oscillation or mode actually, and that is compared to what is still a tiny fraction of Earth's history over the last 5,000 years, under which we're in a molehill of warming, not a mountain. Number four, no sense of history. In addition to the human warming signal being impossible to extract mathematically, and the modern warming being somewhat overblown, we now also know that the new models are insanely overcooked, oversensitive to carbon. Amazingly, it took only a simple input of paleoclimate markers to show that these new models would have had things like 130 degree average Earth temperature, which we know was impossible, would have halted photosynthesis and killed the entire world in the blink of geologic time, whereas in reality there is also more than robust evidence that those were the times of incredible life explosion on Earth, plants, animals, land, and sea. Making matters worse for those who know a thing or two about climate data, the ones that overestimate carbon warming the most are the ones that neglected solar particle forcing and took the easy, erroneous way out of irradiance only. Models bad, 
worse related to the scale of their ignoring the sun, trying to explain a molehill that is mathematically impossible to blame on humans. Six through four were indeed brutal, but now it gets better. Number three, as above, so below. The background of this is that it is well established that the sun controls the stratosphere and mesosphere. The question has been about the troposphere, the bottom part of the atmosphere where weather happens and where we all live. Here, we have the American Meteorological Society commissioning a team of top international scientists to author what is actually Chapter 27 in their 2019 release monograph Series D. And it essentially says that the stratosphere and mesosphere are critically important for the troposphere. The upper-level influence is beyond what anyone had believed, and that there will be no accurate lower atmosphere analysis without properly understanding those upper layers, which again, nobody is disputing, are controlled by the sun. Number two, it's electric. The same namesake as chapter five in our textbook comes as the field has seen a sweeping move in favor of correlation between space weather electromagnetic coupling and clouds since 2014, with about the only recent criticisms being they're not investigating nuclear data periods to see if those had any effect. And what do you know? They do. What has been all but accepted by the solar physics community and what is entering the climate realm as solar particles and cosmic rays finally get a real data set in the mix has now been confirmed in the best possible way. Same experiment, different source of the variable or catalyst, same result as we see with the modulation of the atmospheric electricity by energy from space. Number one, flashes from the sun. Taking our top spot is the telltale forcing vector. Beyond clouds, rain, and surface pressure modulation, the lightning forcing studies tied to cosmic rays are one of the key items in the climate realm that cannot be ignored and won't be in the future. They not only reveal the amount of electrical injection into the atmosphere, but they have implications given the fact that the underlying cloud forcing relates to what has been almost unanimously identified in the last two years of literature to be the single greatest source of uncertainty in climate models, also bias and error in those climate models. That realization about the clouds marries well with the electromagnetic coupling from space weather, and as Earth's magnetic field is weakening, with the sun due for grand minimum the century, the cosmic rays are already about as high as they have ever been on record and are expected to do nothing but go higher for decades to come. Since these top 10 papers sort of hint at one underlying point, let's fill out the skeleton with scenes from our major video earlier this year, scenario number four. If it's your first time seeing it, this really happened earlier this year. Congress asked YouTube to delete this channel. This was my response. And for everyone else who has seen it, it is a smile maker the second time around as well. This is a video for Kathy Castor, for members of the House Select Committee on the Climate Crisis seeking to delete this channel from YouTube and others for offering alternative climate discussion. This is a video for all politicians, for the CEOs of YouTube and Google, and most importantly, for all of you. Most people think there is climate and denial, black and white, and it's just not so. This is the easiest way I can explain the middle ground how to share that information, and why the experts of the world are already standing there. In the preparation for the third edition of our textbook, professors had asked for scenario examples to apply what the studies were telling them to real climate situations, and I did that, but also included what is listed as scenario number four. Someone gives you the chance to state your case on climate science being different than what we've heard for 30 years. And every such conversation, has to begin this way. Nothing about the physics needs to impede the environmentalism. We have the impetus to protect our air, water, soil, plants, and animals of the world, to reduce the gargantuan amount of waste in our society, and to reduce toxic pollutants. The observers stand with nature and the environmental ideas. Any restrictions or pollution penalties you want to put on some big corporation, you will get few arguments from us. But for your own sake, you may want to make sure you're pointing the finger in the right direction, because not all pollution is created equal. CO2 is plant food. It is absolutely true that the plants are on the verge of starvation. Every single great explosion of life on Earth was at much higher CO2 levels in the atmosphere than we have now, oftentimes coinciding with major cooling periods or dropping during major warming events. Either way, there is a reason greenhouses mimic an ancient Earth atmosphere with much, much higher CO2 levels, 
It is what's best for them. They have been doing this in greenhouses for a long time. And despite all those theoretical studies about reduced nutrients with higher CO2, that's not what happens in a greenhouse. Furthermore, is CO2 really the climate player we all thought? Well, not according to the number one scientific publication on Earth, Nature. So much for 90-something percent the fault of CO2. They say that half the Arctic warming is due to ozone loss, and that accounts for a third of all global warming. And for the blame on that one, sure, we do release ozone-destroying chemicals, but the magnetic field of Earth is weakening too, and doing so rapidly. While solar UV makes ozone, solar protons destroy it, and that is what's coming in more with the weakening magnetic field. So we not only have to begin to question blaming carbon dioxide, but we have to question what's really changing the ozone at the polar regions. But luckily, we aren't left wondering about that much anymore. The studies on clouds, like the one that spurned this article from Princeton, are showing it to dominate the temperature of Earth, not atmospheric chemistry. The Princeton scientists also have a manuscript on archive suggesting that clouds cause the global warming pause and are on a decadal cycle relating to sunspot activity and solar forcing. But it's not just scientists at Princeton. It's a flood from top universities, top organizations, and in the hundreds of studies now published, there are over a thousand professors from over a hundred universities. And what this means is we can have both. We can care for the planet for generations, be better stewards to Earth as its dominant species, and we can get the science right as well. It's not one or the other. Now this is straight from the third edition of the textbook, pre-editing. After 40 years of keeping the sun confined to a 0.1% irradiance variation, the UN, IPCC, and everyone else in the climate game has finally agreed to let cosmic rays and solar particles into the mix. When they weren't in the game, all the scientists publishing about them did not count as climate scientists and were never asked about any consensus because they weren't allowed to play. They were forced to do this now, however, letting in cosmic rays and solar particles because thousands of researchers published hundreds of studies and they're coming from major universities and NASA, etc. It simply couldn't be denied anymore. Now in 2019, the World Meteorological Organization condemned the discourse from politicians like Kathy Castor and AOC, saying it was tantamount to religious extremism, it was scientifically wrong, and in their demands of the rest of us is tantamount to terrorism. Terrorists, not according to me, according to the World Meteorological Organization, for their demands and now, especially, the attempts to silence the dissenters in blatant disrespect of the First Amendment. This is precisely what the World Meteorological Organization was talking about. Their climate story, do what we say or you die, that's terrorism. Also in 2019, the number one geophysics group in the world, the American Geophysical Union, dedicated a grand bit about solar particle forcing on climate change to their fall meeting. That's top universities, NASA, ESA, the UN, IPCC, World Meteorological Organization, the number one overall science journal, the number one geophysics group, dozens of other journals. The tide is turning. And so what is the reason for global warming then? Well, it was a tale of two extremes. First, solar forcing has been off the charts. We are almost 100% sure that the sun has not been as active as it was during the period of global warming in over 2,000 years, and we think that number is probably closer to 12,000 years. These grand maximal forcings linger in the atmosphere up to 20 years, and in the ocean even longer, and this is why the heating from the grand solar maximum likely has years left before it is exhausted. Now while the sun was increasing in energy delivery to Earth, the volcanoes were cooling the planet less and less. The green bracketed area is what they use to gauge climate models for volcanic aerosols, by the way, and this recent period in the green brackets is the lowest since the 1500s, but during that time, they were recovering from a major eruption just before it. You have to go back a thousand years to find a period with this low of volcanic cooling. So that's the sun heating, the volcanoes not cooling, maximized at centennial and millennial scales at the exact time as global warming. And now we come to the most critical point, the particle forcing, because this tells us how the sun did it. 
This is what the UN and all of those folks have let into the models after decades due to those floods of papers. And in the image below on the official solar particle forcing dataset page for the world of climate science, that central column with UV and TSI over to the left are really all that ever existed before. No cosmic rays and no particles like from the solar wind. These are what the papers are about, what we made a movie called Climate Forcing about, and it's the focus of the recent follow-up episodes too. All of those are linked for you right below this video, and they all make one point. It's the sun. Particle forcing has been excluded, but not anymore, at least not when CMIP6 models get their day in 2022. We just prefer not to dwell in Fantasia until then. Part of that Fantasia has been apologized for by one of its creators, Professor Emeritus Will Happer from Princeton, who was not in on those recent cloud studies, but was one of the scientists who developed the first climate models. He says they never kept up with the data or improvements, and it's now about adjusting to fit a narrative and making sure you don't get shut down and lose your funding and lose your job, more so than about the science. This problem in the models was recently attacked from another angle. Dr. Frank at our national labs would be an excellent person for our politicians to ask about extracting climate change due to human activity from the data set. Hint, it's impossible. And just so you don't think this is an all USA play, Confessions of a Climate Scientist is one of the most academically horrifying things ever written, not because of something he did, but because of his accusations. The same is being said in a more academically polite term from Latin America, where they're not only noticing that it is the sun that controls the climate, but that the modern warming is nothing significant. Now on the particle forcing, the joule heating, they found that the way they treat the same data set can result in an 18% variation in electron joule heating. CO2 is parts per million, solar irradiance at 0.1, so 18% is huge, and that's just the electrons, not even counting the much, much more massive proton punch. Now, the most recent work was just shared this morning in our daily rundown. It was an international team that included other national lab scientists from Los Alamos this time, saying again, it's the sun, it's the sun. Now, we're going to jump back to that claim out of Latin America that modern warming is nothing special, and there's no way for me to stress enough how true that is. Don't listen to headlines and articles. Listen to the scientists in their peer-reviewed papers. And especially because we are nearing the end of this interglacial period and the drop in temperature that Earth is about to force upon us simply from orbital variation makes the tiny bit of global warming so far look like nothing, even more so when looking over millions of years. And by the way, all those small creatures that were supposed to die off, creating an extinction-level event up through the food chain if the oceans heated up a little bit, we're doing fine across this entire timeline. They are doing fine again now. Phytoplankton, krill, chlorophyll. Now the links below this video are to the climate movie and the follow-up series. There are just way too many papers to list them all and where would you even begin? 90% are behind a paywall anyway. The third edition of the textbook is still a few months away, but until then, remember, you can have both. We can be good to Earth and each other and we can get the science right too. And we better, because the sun is going to enter grand minimum this century. The volcanoes never stay away for long in the paleoclimate record. The next major climate move of this planet will be to back down out of the interglacial period, and all while cosmic rays increase due to a weaker magnetic field of Earth, causing more clouds and more cooling. The climate is changing. We must stop pollution. We must divorce our environmental idealism from real-world physics. And the internet is a big place. Kathy, we're not going anywhere. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.